right, Shalom, Shalom, giving all praise to the Most High, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Bashem, Kakwadash, double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching this truth that has gone all around the earth. And Shalom to the hopeful elect out there, to brothers pushing this gospel to the four corners of the earth, and you few sisters who believe in the gospel, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shah, say to you all, Shalom. This is your brother, Itaza Wine by Off, and I'm going to bring a lesson this evening, and the lesson may very well be lengthy. Okay, and, and actually I'm going to try to do this lesson in maybe two or three parts um, because it's a little bit tedious, okay? Um, we see, matter of fact, let me keep this up for a little bit. Uh, we see with all the things that are going on in the earth in the time in which we live in, okay, and particularly with um, Kyrie Irving and Kanye and whole Hebrews to Negroes film and so on and so forth documentary brothers are being asked a lot of questions right whether they be coming the questions coming from your prospective family members or, or friends or even friends of friends okay and uh, I was posed with such such a question coming from uh, a young brother that I know who's moving towards the faith and making some good strides and of course he's got someone that you know he shared the gospel with and long story short um you know there are there are those who are still out there who are straddling the fence um who are unsure of a lot of different things who still believe in certain doctrines in the black church and the christian church and so on okay and these doctrines, as a matter of fact, let me see if I can pull this up real quick. And these doctrines are, uh, stumbling blocks, right? Okay. Let's just see if we can bring it up and see what it says. A circumstance that causes difficulty or hesitation. Okay. That's a stumbling block. All right. And there are such stumbling blocks. For, um, for those who are still in the black church, right, as they see it, okay? Now, I'm going to try to address a couple of questions. There's like four different points that this person brought up and that I could see, and I don't think I'm going to get to all four of them tonight because we got a myriad of scriptures to go through, Okay. And I'm going to do my best to keep this as short and concise as I can. But you know how the spirit goes. Sometimes, you know, uh, you know, spirit takes over and it's, it's longer than usual. But uh, in any event, to answer some of the questions that this young person has, he's a young man and I believe he's studying to <laughs> be, a, be a minister in the, in the church. Okay. But anyway... Um, I'll take the first part of a question that he had, and that was the doctrine of hell in and of itself. And, um, you know, people still have this idea, particularly in the church, that all wicked people are going to burn in a, a place in the, you know, under their lawn, so to speak, or, or in the ground somewhere. Okay. And that's just not the case, because even, you know, when you look at ancient times and even in the scriptures you don't see anything talking about a place where souls go to burn all right the soul is energy anyway okay that's why when a person dies their body goes cold right because the breath the spirit is gone you see and um you also have to keep in mind people <laughs> they drill down into the earth five, six, seven, eight miles. Okay? You know how Esau is trying to get everything out of the earth. Okay? Ain't none of them, you know, ever said that they ran across any souls down there screaming. Right? So anyway, we have to keep things in their proper perspective. And anytime, you know, this is for edification's sake. You know, anytime we, you know, have these questions from people, we... Sometimes it's annoying to keep going over the same thing over and over again. But then you have those times where people are, are not sure and have don't know exactly what's in the scriptures. Okay. 
And then another part of that is you have to understand that being a Hebrew Israelite, right, coming back, repenting, converting, okay, and believing on the names of the Heavenly Father, which is Yahweh, that's the Heavenly Father, Bahashim, in the name, okay, of Yahweh Shai, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. All right, for those out there who may listen to this, um, so that you understand when we give our greeting, that's we're greeting you in the name of the Heavenly Father and in, in the name of, the, of, of His only begotten Son, our Savior, okay? So, um, what happens is, particularly with Jake, you know, Jake liked to jump right in and want to know the deepest mysteries and breakdowns and so on and so forth. Uh, let me see where my, I want my first scripture. It's locked here. Want to know the deepest things, and you have to start really with the, with the milk, okay? Um, you have to start with the easier things and not worry about the deep things, okay? And that's that's hard for Jake, okay? They want to know the deepest mysteries of the Bible, you know, before they'll even listen to you, okay? And then there are those who get offended, you know, they, they, can't, they can't give you 20 minutes so that you can show it to them and read it to them out of the scriptures. You know, our Bibles are no different than what your Bibles are, <clears throat> okay? And um, so we'll get into, uh, we'll get into this here right now, and I'm going to do my best to, to, to pull these, some of these scriptures for, for this hell thing, all right? And I've done this before in another lesson, okay? Um, however, for some reason... You know, I, I really can't remember. It's over 500 lessons on this channel, so I can't remember which ones I, you know, addressed it in. Okay, uh, let's do uh, Slaki. Okay, we're not gonna. I don't think I want to start here. Let's. There's something else I wanted to get. Uh, yeah, we're gonna start here. Um, This is uh, Philippians, all right, chapter 2 and verse 12. And it reads, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now which more in my absence, what? Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Okay, so you work out your salvation, okay? And, and not worry about what other people are going to say or think of you um, when you begin to, you know, come down this path, right, of repentance, okay, because that's what it's all about, all right? So this is um, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14, we'll jump in right there. Of those things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words, to no profit, right? Just don't be bumping your gums for no reason, okay? And this was the Apostle Paul to, to Timothy, okay? But to the subverting of the hearers, study to show thyself approved unto the Most High, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of what? Truth. So this is the word of truth, okay? No gimmicks, no flashiness, just the word in truth okay so these are just basic things okay that you should be geared to when you're trying to understand the gospel all right um so like here there was something else i had i'm trying y'all forgive me because i have to scroll down here it is this is first peter First Peter, and as you see right here at the top, and I use the blue letter because it's more convenient to, to pop in and out and go through, you know, different scriptures, okay? Um, and we'll jump into some words here eventually. And we know that the blue letter goes off from time to time, depending on what you're looking at. 
So we uh, we eat the meat and we spit out the bones. Okay, we take what we need out of it. All right. So this is First Peter, and it says right here, as newborn babes. Right. First Peter two and one. Wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile, and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. As newborn babes desire the what? Sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Okay? If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Right? So you need to start out slow. Okay? You need to understand the basic scriptures, the fundamental scriptures, things that will lead, the scriptures that lead you to salvation and stop worrying about the mysteries. Okay? So those first three basic scriptures I gave, you know, um, they're, they're, uh, they're needful, okay? Because you have to first build your foundation, okay? As a new convert, all right? And Lord willing, this, this, this young man will, will, will watch this video and, and just sit back and take it in, okay? All right, so let's go over here, and I'm going to start on his question about hell. You know, Jake is, you know, we all came out of a church. We all came out of some other faith or religion, whether it had been the black church, Christianity, Catholicism, the Catholic church, the Roman Catholic church, right? Buddhism, Islam, five percenters, you know, all of that, okay? Right? But the Lord dealt with us through the Spirit to get the understanding of these scriptures through the men that He set up to teach. Okay? We entered into other men's works. Alright? So anyway, let me try to try my best to stay on topic here. So this whole thing about hell. Alright. So let's go to Genesis 1 and 1 and we'll read this slightly. And it reads, in the beginning, and I'll read it verbatim. In the beginning, God created, what, the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day and darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day and God said let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let the, the, let it divide the waters from the waters okay now Genesis is a very deep book but we're going to try to keep this on the surface okay so you see that the Lord created the heaven right and the earth told you what he did was void okay created light dark okay just so that you can understand atmosphere stratosphere the heavens the firmament the ground that comes up out of the water okay the sky if you will all right now what is the whole point of reading this if this is the beginning of the creation in which it says the creation where do you see in here that he said he created a subterranean place where souls go and burn in the middle of the earth known as hell I'll wait for the answer okay in the ancient world we didn't believe in no such place okay so here you see the beginning of creation and yet he does not say or it is not written okay Moses did the writing of the five books, okay, that there is a place called hell where spirits go to burn for eternity, okay? Lord willing, that's clear enough, okay? So let's, let's go on, and I'm going to read a story here, all right? And brothers out there and sisters as well, you know, this is elementary for you, but like I said, always for the benefit and the edification of people who are new. Okay? This is 1 Samuel. Uh, let me see. Where do I want to come in? 
Let's start right here. Okay, this is 1 Samuel 28, 6. And it reads that when Saul inquired of the Lord, and the Lord in capital letters is his name, Yahweh, the Lord Yahweh answered him, neither by dream, so like it answered him not. Okay. Saul, who was king, okay, of uh, Israel, okay, inquired of the Lord, right? He went to the Lord for something, all right? So the Lord answered him not, neither by dream, nor by Urim, nor by prophet. Then said Saul unto his servant, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit in Endor. Now Saul had, if you go back and read the beginning of the story, you know that Saul told him that they, you know, get rid of all, he had to get rid of all the witches and warlocks and so on and so forth. But anyway, he, he, Saul was trying to figure something out. Okay, so, but you can read the story in your own time. I'm going to get to a point here. Okay, I'm trying to get to a point. All right. Going on to verse 8. And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment, and he went and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night, and he said, I pray thee, div divine unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring me him up, whom I shall name unto thee. And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest that Saul, now he's, now Saul, King Saul's in a, he's in a, a disguise, so the woman doesn't recognize him. Okay? Saul had done how he had cut off those that have familiar spirits and, and the wizards out of the land. Therefore, then layeth thou a snare for my life to cause me to die. Right. So she's saying, you know that we're not supposed to be doing this, that he sent everybody out the land who deals with familiar spirits. You trying to get me killed? Okay. And Saul swore to her by the Lord, Yahweh, saying, as the Lord liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Then said the woman, whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, bring me up Samuel. Samuel was the prior king. Okay, a righteous king, might I add. Okay. Verse 12, and when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spake to Saul, saying, why hast thou deceived me, for thou art Saul? So she figured it out. She put two and two together and knew that he was Saul. Right? And the king said unto her, be not afraid, for what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. And he said unto her, What form is he of? And she said, An old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel. And he stopped, Salakia, and he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. And Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? Right. The key, this king Samuel, okay, was at rest. Okay, he was at rest. All right. And Saul answered, I am so distressed for the Philistines make war against me and the Most High departed from me and answered me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore I have called thee that thou mayest make known unto me what I shall do. Then said Samuel, Wherefore then doest thou ask in me, seeing the Lord Yahweh is departed from thee and is become thine enemy? And the Lord hath done to him as he spake by me, for the Lord hath rent the kingdom out of thy hand and giveth it to thy neighbor, even to David. Right. So the Lord was going to take the kingdom from Saul and give it to King, well, he would be King David, okay, for being wicked. And not doing what the Lord, he disobeyed the Lord. The Lord told him to do a specific thing, and he didn't do it. He didn't finish it out. He didn't carry it out, okay, because he let other people get in his ear, all right? You, like I said, you can read the story on your own time, okay? Going on to verse 18, because thou obeyest not the voice of the Lord, nor executeth his fierce wrath upon Amalek. 
we know that Amalek today are the ish people, the small hatters. Okay, so the Lord wanted them taken out, and Saul didn't do it all. Okay, therefore hath the Lord done this thing unto thee this day. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines, so-called Africans, right? And tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me. The Lord also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. And this was my point right here in verse 19. Samuel tells Saul that on tomorrow he and his sons will be with him. And where is Samuel? Samuel's in the spiritual realm. Okay? So now Saul has done something wicked and disobeyed the Lord. Would not would, would that not be a reason that when you go against the Lord, you know, that's being wicked. Would that not be a reason to go to some place known as hell? So why would Samuel tell him that on tomorrow you and your sons, they gonna y'all gonna be over here with me? Okay, you get the point? So there is no place where you go and, and burn forever in the earth. Okay, that should be fairly clear. I would I would like to think so. Okay. So let's go over to uh, Ecclesiastes and I'm trying to see where, you know where I started to talk. All right. And we'll get to the point here in Ecclesiastes 12. Uh, yeah, we just started to talk. It ain't going to Ecclesiastes 12 and 1. Remember thou that created creator in the days of thy youth, with the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain, in the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinding, the grinders cease because they are few. And, th and those that look out of the windows be darkened, and we liken that in into this day and time as difficult times are here upon the earth again, right? All right, because jobs are being lost, things are just unpredictable, okay? Homelessness, right? Famine is creeping in, diesel shortage. Okay, so let's go on. We don't want to get bogged down. Okay, verse 4, And the doors shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low. And he shall rise up at the voice of the birds, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Also when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and, and fears shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, the desires the desire shall fail because man goes to his long home and the mourners go about the streets. Or ever the silver cord be loosed or the golden bowl be broken or the pitcher be broken at the fountain or the wheel broken at the cistern. Right? Just difficult times all the way around. Hard to gather up anything. Okay? Here we go. Then shall the dust, your body is made from dust, Return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto the Most High who gave it. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, all is vanity. Everything in life, really, it, it doesn't mean anything. Okay, but the point being in verse 7, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto the Most High who gave it? I ask you again, where is this hell that you people in the damn church keep talking about? Okay. A time for everything. This is Ecclesiastes 3. Okay, we start at the top. No problem. 
To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rent and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which the Most High has given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work of the Most High, make it for the beginning to the end. Difficult to, hold, to, to understand everything that the Lord is doing. Okay, just like this truth is a mystery to those of the world. Okay, verse 12. And I know that there is no good in them but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is a gift of the Most High. I know that whatsoever the Most High doeth, it shall be what forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And the Most High doeth it that men should fear before him. That which hath been is now, that which has been is now, and that which is to be hath already been. And the Most High required that which is past. Yeah, this is a big cycle, okay, which goes into another another topic of reincarnation all right but anyway let's go to verse 16 and moreover i saw i saw under the sun the place of judgment that wickedness was there and the place of righteousness that iniquity was there and i said in my heart god shall judge the righteous and the wicked for there is a time there there, there, it's like it, for there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. I said in my heart concerning the states of the sons of men that the Most High might manifest them, that they might see that see that they themselves are beasts. Okay? For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. Right? No difference. Right? Even one thing befalleth them, as the one dieth, and that's that one thing, so dieth the other. Yea, they have all one breath, one breath, right, from the Most High. So that a man that hath, so that a man hath no preeminence above a beast, for all is vanity. Here's the point. Verse 20, all go unto one place. How, how many? All of them. All go to one place. All are of the dust and all return to dust again. Verse 21, who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward? I thought the pit, uh, uh, Slaki, the, uh, the place of hell was in the earth. It just told you that the Lord judges the wicked and the righteous. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward? And the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth. Right. The beast come back instantly. All right. If you will. Okay. Born into another beast. Okay. But man goeth upward. His spirit goeth upward. What? Back to the one who gave it. The most high. Okay. Where is the hell in this in this book of wisdom right here, Ecclesiastes? It's not there. Okay. So let's move on. I don't I'm, I'm 
I'm getting kind of lengthy here. Then I'll, I'll, hopefully I can get through this. Again, Ecclesiastes, we'll just, uh, chapter one. Let's just jump in right here uh, at verse nine because I don't want to go too much longer. All right. So this is Ecclesiastes 1 and 9, and it says, The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and the thing that is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. Let me see here. Okay. Going down to verse 10. Is there anything whereof it may be said, See, this is new. It hath been already or old time, which was before us. There is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come and those that shall come after. So the point being, I thought you went into the bottom of hell if you was, you know, the Lord would judge you and cast you and put you into the middle of the earth in hell for eternity. Okay. It doesn't say that. Okay, it says the thing that hath been, it is that that shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. Your spirit is ancient, and it comes back. Okay, I know for some that they never heard that before, but hey, that's the way. Hey, that's the way the Lord works. And we just read in the scripture that said, how, how can you figure out what the Lord is doing? Okay. All right. And when you come into this truth, and that's what it's known as, this truth, all right, the real understanding of the scriptures, you have to get rid of that old man of yourself, that black church self, that Catholic self. You have to get rid of that. Okay. And that's done through the spirit. Romans 12 and 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service in the men of the Lord who are preaching and teaching and have been, starting with the head apostles, okay, of great millstone, who've been on the streets for more than 30 years, okay, making their lives a sacrifice. It's their reasonable service, and we follow in like manner, okay? Verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High, okay? So you got to change your mind, okay? You can't conform to this world, Okay, um, let's get, and that hell doctrine is, is for, for, for Christians, is a stumbling block. Okay, uh, let's go up here to, because there is a, a, a the idea that when you preach the truth and if it's hard for a person to receive it, you know, then they get into that Christian uh, mumbo jumbo of, you know, well, the devil knows scripture too and they know how to twist it and, you know, get you all confused. No, we coming right out of the scriptures. Okay. But if you want to say that another man, he's, te he's teaching the truth, a prophet, okay, is teaching the truth. You want to call him the devil, then that's fine. Okay, so let's just jump in here and just read this John um, 10. And let me see here. I'll start with verse 7. Okay, and it reads, Then said Yahweh, it says Jesus, but that's not his name. And I'll get into that, Lord willing, before this video ends. Then said Yahweh unto them again, verily, verily, I say, unto you I am the door of the sheep all that ever came before me were thieves and robbers but the sheep did not hear them right pointing a direct line at you so called 
preachers and pastors now in these modern days who think you know so much. Okay? I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Who? His sheep. And his sheep hear his voice. Okay, which are the elect at this time. Okay. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. Right. That's you fake false ministers and preachers and pastors who are not teaching your your congregations, okay, who they are. You, you so-called black churches and what have you. You are a hireling. Okay? And you're misleading the people. You're keeping them sleep because you're not teaching them this truth. Okay? We'll go on. Verse 13, the hireling fleeth, right? Because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. You don't care about the sheep. Don't become a minister or a preacher, right? Because you want a job or, or because you are too lazy to actually go out there and hustle and work a job. There are those who wanna be in the ministry because they are gonna make that their job, hustling, scamming, and what have you, okay? I'm not saying that to any, you know, to anybody out, out there. I'm just saying that that's, that's how that, that gig goes, okay? Verse 14, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and I am known of mine, right? We know through the grace, right, of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, okay, that he is our savior, Okay? Verse 15, as the father knoweth me, even so knoweth I the father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, right, a scattered Israelites, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doeth my father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. So I can take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. There was a division, therefore, again amongst the Jews of these sayings, right? These wicked Pharisees and Sadducees murmuring to themselves. And many of them said, he hath a devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? See, so when you hear the prophets and the men of the Lord you holy rollers and you so-called sanctified people and you think you know everything, you call us devils. Because we teach you, we, we teach in the truth, right? And it doesn't conform, right? To the, to the, it doesn't conform to, to, um, to what the church is doing, okay? This is, this is not, again, this is not Christianity. Okay, this is a heritage, okay, the heritage of a nation, the story of a nation, and the story of their God. Okay, it's not religion. Verse 21, others said, these are not the words of him that hath a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? You see, so speaking these words that are coming out of this gospel, this truth and this understanding is opening the eyes of the blind, okay? And this is why the Israelites are a hot topic today, okay? So now let's, uh, let's look at this. This is a word called eschatology, all right? So this is what's going to, this truth is going to debacle your eschatology, your belief, Okay, and it reads, the part of theology concerned with death, judgment, and the final 
destiny of the soul and of humankind. Christian hope is concerned with eschatology or the science of the last things. Now you can go and look up more different definition uh, on eschatology, but this is going to mess up your way of thinking. This truth is, okay, because all the things that we learn in church are not true. They're not exact, okay? And the people in the church have been blinded, okay? So let's go to Romans and uh, let's start at, let's just jump in right here, verse 8. This will be good enough. It says, oh, this is the Apostle Paul speaking to the scattered Israelites, not to the white Romans, to the white man, the European, speaking to the Israelites who are scattered in Rome and thereabouts. Okay? And it reads, O no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Right. So he covered everything from the old law up into what Jehovah Shai said. Right. His commandment. You see, so this is another part that teaches you Christians that the law is not done away with. OK, so let's go on. Romans 13 and 10, and it says, Love worketh no ill will to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. And that knowing the time, knowing this time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. The great awakening is happening right now, right underneath your nose. While you straddle the fence, you don't believe the prophets and you don't believe, believe your own eyes sometimes. You're reading it right here in the scriptures. Okay? For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Okay? When you don't believe that you were asleep. Here it is in Isaiah. Okay? And let's go up here to verse 9. Isaiah 29 and 9 and it reads, stay yourselves and wonder. Isaiah was a prophet. Right? Stay yourselves and wonder. Cry ye out and cry. They are not drunken. It's like it. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. For the Lord Yahweh hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep. And that and hath Close your eyes, the prophets and your rulers, and see it have he covered. Right, your fake false preachers and your teachers and your fake prophets, okay, the Lord has put you all to sleep. And now we, we already read what Paul said, now it's high time for you to come out of sleep because your salvation is nearer than what you believe, okay? vision of all is, is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, read this, I pray thee, and he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. Right? And that's how it is for those of you in them fake false religions, okay, who are Israelites. Okay? This book is sealed to you. Okay? And the Holy Spirit has to be dealing with you so that you can understand it. Okay. Verse 12. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned. Saying read this I pray thee. And he saith, I am not learned. Wherefore the Lord saith for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth. Right. And that's what you Christians love to do. You, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Right? Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me. And their fear toward me is taught by what? The precepts of, precepts of men. 
your fake false leaders. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder, for the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of the prudent men shall be hid. Woe, woe means destruction. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works are in the dark, and they say, Who seeth us, and who knoweth us? Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the work say unto him that made it, He made me not? Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, He had no understanding? You see, so you're doing things that are wrong. Okay, you turn things upside down. Okay, you have no understanding. Okay, and we'll leave that right there. There's more to it, but Lord willing, I got the point out of it. So addressing this whole idea of hell in and of itself and that the men who are preaching the truth, you know, don't have any devils in them. The devils are the, are the ones that you're listening to in those churches. Shalakia. Now, we're going to get to, let's see here. I just wanted to grab this because this is Ezekiel, another prophet, right? And we're going to go into one quick verse right here. It says, Behold, all souls are mine. Okay? Because I think part of the question concerning even, even hell, who was going? Okay? And the point being that we all going to return to the Lord. You're going to face your judgment, obviously. But all the souls of men belong to the Lord. Okay? Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Okay? But the point being that the Lord is in control of all souls. Okay? Going on again here, let's go to Revelation real quick. And even though this reads as uh, the martyrs, and they have been martyrs in past time, right? But as we read, that which was shall be. It shall be again, and so on, paraphrasing, okay? So this is Revelation 6 and 9, and we look at this, and it reads, And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar, what? The souls of them that were slain for the word of the Most High and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, doest thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? So these souls are in the spiritual realm, crying unto the Lord. See? Not in some place called hell. All right, so let's go over to uh, Luke, because I think this is one of the scriptures that was in question. Okay, the rich man and Lazarus, okay, it reads, this is Luke 16 and 19, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fierce, fear, fared, like it, fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at its gates full of sores and desired to be fed with the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked the sores, okay, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip his finger tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things and likewise Lazarus eat evil things, but now he is comforted and thou art tormented. And besides all this between us 
And besides all this between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. So I thought hell was in the middle of the earth. Okay, so how could they see each other and they are across from each other? If you're going to read this and take it literally, that is. Okay. If there, if, if, if one would be up and one would be down, wouldn't it? If you believed in that doctrine. If you believed in that doctrine of hell that they taught in church. And besides all this between us, between us. And you, there is a great gulf fix so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us and would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, they have Moses and the prophet. Right, they got the scriptures. Let them hear them. See? And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto, unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, unto him, If they hear not, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Okay, this is a parable. It is a story. Okay? that he's going into to show you the difference and the comparison of those who were living, let's say, in his time, in Yahushua's time, who were rich and fair and well and were doing well and were cheating the people, throwing the Israelites on the outside of Jerusalem on the outskirts, telling them they had to pay taxes to Rome and what have you, okay? This is, this is a parable that's being spoken. Okay, it's not talking about a literal place known as hell. Things are going to be switched around. The Lord's kingdom is going to come upon the earth and those of us who've suffered in our lives. Let's say right now, the prophets right now. Brothers are losing jobs, being fired, right? Women walking away from them, okay? People calling them devils, all right? Taking some serious losses. Okay, so that's what it's really going into. It's, it's going into the parable of those who are lowly in this life. And when the kingdom comes, we're going to be set up. Okay. This is Job. And let's go to. Uh. Let's just jump in at verse 9. Try to get to the point as quickly as possible. Job 17 and 9. The righteous also shall hold on his way, and he that hath clean hands shall be stronger and stronger. But as for you all, do you return and come now? For I cannot find one wise man among you. My days are past, my purpose are broken off, even the thoughts of my heart. They change the night into day, the light is short because of darkness. If I wait, the grave is my house. I made my bed in darkness, okay? Which is going into what hell is really speaking about. It's speaking about the grave, going into the grave, all right? I have said, I have said to corruption, thou art my father, to the worm, thou art my mother and my sister. And where is now my hope? As for my hope, who shall see it? They shall go down to the bars of the pit. When our rest together is in the dust. So hell is talking about low state condition, right? As we read with Lazarus and here in Job, you see that it is referring to the pit or the grave. That is, that is, that is what hell is. Okay, let's get, uh, Jonah. All right. So this is Jonah. And let me go up here to the top. I don't know if we're going to have time to read all this. 
This is Jonah, uh, chapter 2, verse 1. It says, Jonah prayed unto the Lord Yahweh, his power, because that's what God means, right? God means power, all right? That's not, that's not the Heavenly Father's name. I know in Christendom, they say God, but that's not his name. His name is Yahweh. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord Yahweh, his power, out of the fish's belly said I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord and he heard me out of the belly of hell cried I and thou heardest my voice so let's go into this hell okay it's talking about low 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 uh, a low state uh, affliction um, it's, it's talking about the grave, the pit, not a literal place where you go and burn, okay? And like I said, sometimes the uh, strongs be going off in this blue letter, but right here you see it, okay? It says grave, hell, pit. Hell is synonymous with pit or grave. It's not talking about a literal place. See, Shiloh, underworld, grave, hell, pit. Okay, place of no return, pit. When you die, you bury somebody's body. Okay, consider the grave or hell or the pit. All right. Um, that's pretty much it. Shiloh, underworld, grave, hell, pit. That's what it's referring to. It's not talking about some place where Satan is peeping around the corner to stick you in the ass with a pitchfork. Okay. So anyway, that's pretty much that. Let me see if I got anything else. Oh, I think the, one of the other questions that we see here, this is how we spell at the top. You see those four characters and at the bottom of those four characters, you see five characters. The top is the Heavenly Father. That's how you spell your howl, reading it from right to left. So like you and Yahweh Shai, all right, from right to left in the Paleo Hebrew, all right, for those who want to understand, okay, and you can do more learning on that, okay. Now, let me see if there's anything else. Oh, right here, quickly, if you don't have one, you should get one, okay, and if I can get it, if it'll come up, and that's a 1611. King James Version Bible. I don't know why this thing did not go to it. But anyway. Uh, it's a lock in. I don't know why it didn't go to it. But anyway. And there you will find. If you look at it here online here. King James Bible. Right? Because the young man also had a problem with the Apocrypha. Okay. So let's just take, for example, when you go to the King James Version Bible online, you go to Matthew. Now, first, let me open this up. So you see a check mark by Matthew, right? So this is a whole Bible, okay? From Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and such. And you go down into what they call the New Testament, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. And then you go down, continue. You see 1st, 2nd, Ezra, Tobit. Judah, okay, that's in the, that's the Apocrypha, but the Apocrypha is actually between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Here, where that dotted line is, is where it really should be, but online here, this is how you get to it, and they know that this is a part of the Bible. That's why it's in there. Now, your standard King James Version Bible doesn't have the Apocrypha in it, but you can buy one separately, or you can order you a 1611 King James Version Bible. Now, a point I wanted to make, Salakia. Okay. Here you see in verse 1, it says, The book of the generations of who? Do you see a J there? It's an I. Aesos. Okay. Because the letter J didn't come into effect until the 1600s, late 1600s, like 1634, somewhere in there like that. 
in the 1611, you will not find the name Jesus. It's not in there. Okay? Here, um, another name right here, right? It says Abraham begot Isaac, and Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Judas and his brethren. But it's, it's spelled with an I because the J did not exist. Okay? So his name is not Jesus. His name is Yahweh Shai. Okay? So anyway, I think tonight, this is pretty much all I got. I'm a, I think I'm going to stop right here. This will be a good stopping point. There's other points that I have to have to get to for this young man if you watch the video. And um, so we hit this hell doctrine, and I should, Lord willing, you understand that there's no such thing, okay? And also that the Apocrypha is a part of the Bible, you know? Um, in the churches, I know they don't tell you that, and your Bible probably doesn't have one in it, okay? But it is a part of the 1611 Bible, okay? And you can research that on your own, okay? So anyway, I'm going to stop right there. there. I'll have to make a part two, Lord willing, I can get to it tomorrow. All right? Or however the spirit moves. Um, Lord willing, this was edifying. And I hope the young man watches it. And I hope this answers any questions for anybody. I mean, not just him, but anybody that watches this video. Okay? That you learn something tonight. And then you, you, you learn something tonight. And hopefully that is that you need to study. Okay? As well as well okay so with that i'll end right there i'll give all praise to the most high yahweh bahashem in the name yahweh shai all right double honor to the apostles and elders of great millstone shalom honor to the hopeful elect i'll see you all again real soon with another lesson lord willing shalom